and I'm going to pile in a whole handful of these. <gasps> but Ben, don't antioxidants after a workout blunt the hormetic effects of exercise? My name is Ben Greenfield. I'm a biohacker, celebrity trainer, nutritionist, New York Times bestselling author, and world-renowned speaker. I'm on a constant quest to uncover powerful and practical health hacks to awaken, unlock, and unleash the full potential of the human body, mind, and spirit. Now I'm a fasted workout guy, but it's important to understand that in most cases, if you like to work out hard like I do, and you're going to wake up in the morning and work out fasted, the carbohydrates that you have in the evening the night before are important to take into consideration. I actually eat a lot of carbohydrates with dinner. I eat those carbs with dinner because that's how I sock away muscle glycogen for the next morning's workout so I can work out fasted. There are a few key nutrients that are game changers when it comes to pre-workout that I personally use to fuel a workout and still keep myself in a somewhat fasted state. The first thing that I implement are electrolytes, okay? So pretty straightforward. Now what's interesting is, especially if you're low carb or keto, your electrolyte needs to go up. And if you're feeling flat during a, say a morning fasted workout, then in many cases it can be salts just as much as it can be things like carbohydrates or amino acids. So amino acids, this allows me to maintain high blood levels of amino acids without having to eat steak, chicken, poultry, pork, or eggs before I go work out. The third component I didn't start using till probably about four years ago when they became affordable, accessible, and began to not taste like the foul dung of Satan. Ketones, cool thing about ketones is they can be a preferred fuel for the liver, the heart, the brain, the diaphragm, etc. during exercise. And most importantly for me, my blood sugar levels will sometimes dip down into like the 50s. So what I find is because ketones are an alternate source of fuel in addition to glucose, I can take the ketones and basically, even if I'm hypoglycemic after workout, I still feel fantastic because I got the ketones on board. The last final fourth component of any good pre-workout blend is anything that will increase blood flow, right? So natural sources of that would be beets or beet juice, watermelon or watermelon juice, etc. There are supplements like arginine, citrulline, beet extract, nitric oxide precursors. One of the things that I use, and I actually, full disclosure, I developed this particular compound for a company called Vitaboom. So for me these days, it's everything that I just showed you, just a couple of the Vitaboom pre-workouts thrown in there, and I'll go out and have a fantastic, fantastic, soul-crushing visit to the gym. Post-workout nutrition, pretty straightforward. We're talking protein, we're talking fatty acids, and we're talking carbohydrates. However, a lot of people are under the impression I would say based on the latest research, a false impression that you shouldn't have antioxidants after workout. Now, while I show you what I'm gonna do in my smoothie this morning, I'll explain to you why that might be a little bit flawed. Next up, I've got my bag of fresh strawberries, blueberries, and huckleberries, and I'm going to pile in a whole handful of these. <gasps> but Ben, don't antioxidants after a workout blunt the hormetic effects of exercise? That claim is based off of studies on high dose synthetic vitamin C and vitamin E. The idea here is that when you work out, your body gets a little bit inflamed. We're gonna pause there for just a second, you guys. I'm gonna grab a thing of coconut water. I'm gonna come back in, I'm gonna stand right here and act like I didn't. The research that shows that to be the case uses very high doses of synthetic vitamin C and vitamin E. We're talking about vitamin C, well in excess of 6,000 milligrams or six grams, combined with mega doses, mega doses of vitamin E. Now the idea here is that when you work out, it creates a little bit of inflammation in your body. When you're inflamed, one of the ways that your body gets fitter faster is it combats that inflammation on its own. That's how you get harder to kill. The body mounts an anti-inflammatory response to that exercise, and part of that anti-inflammatory response involves repairing muscle fibers. A great way to repair muscle fibers is put a little protein in your smoothie. Your muscles are inflamed, they're beat up, and you take a bunch of synthetic vitamin C and vitamin E, your body, because it has all the synthetic vitamin C and vitamin E around, therefore it doesn't have to mount its own inflammatory or anti-inflammatory response, and therefore you don't build as much mitochondria, you don't get as many uh, new muscle cells created, etc. 
Then we're gonna blend this bad boy up and I'll show you what I put on top of it. I like crunchy stuff. So for this, I'm gonna go with some cacao nibs, a little bit extra carbs, a little bit extra fiber, a little bit extra energy, chock full of antioxidants, but not enough to kill your gains, bro. Coconut flakes, also a great source of texture. They're not super nutrient dense, but remember what I said about fats? There's where I'm getting some of my fats from that coconut meat. And then finally, I'll go with macadamia nuts, cashews, pistachios, Brazil nuts, you name it. One of my favorite nuts are Baruca nuts. Even though that pinkish blue hue definitely indicates that there are berry-based antioxidants in my smoothie, just remember, it's a myth that having a few natural antioxidants after workout is gonna blunt your gains. And it's also a myth that any of my smoothies do not take you to absolutely flavorful culinary ambrosia-like heaven. So try that recipe out and let me know what you think.